Hey guys, Solid here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm asking the question, are some of these scramblers getting good enough to actually be secretly adventure bikes? And I think the answer is yes. Some of these scramblers have become so dirt worthy that they're now a decent consideration if you're looking for an adventure bike with a little bit of difference. Something that looks nice as well as can be ridden off road. Because let's face it, the adventure bike world, there's all a bit of sameness in the designs. Now the adventure bike guys are going to point out their practicality and the utilitarian use and the rigidity of their adventure bikes and you're not wrong. If you're wanting to do proper off-road it's best to get a proper off-road bike. But there are many advantages to having a scrambler. Picture this you've just had a great ride in the dirt. You pull up to the cafe no longer do you have to be ashamed of ordering your fancy latte and soon the old blokes circle around you in a halo like you're some kind of pensionary Jesus. So I I think that's the upside of owning a scrambler. So let's start strong and obvious straight out of the gate and that's the Triumph Scrambler 1200XE. That's the most off-road capable of all of their Triumph lineup. It's also the most expensive but it definitely is worth it if you got the money. Now of course Triumph has all the buzzwords attached to what you need out of a retro classic. It has the character, it has the heritage and you could argue that it has the soul as well. So it's also a very good looking motorcycle one that you can be proud of when you pull up at the cafe but if you scratch the surface it actually is quite a capable adventure bike and it's why it's made the list and also why it's first on the list so let's jump into what makes this bike a great off-road adventure motorcycle not just a pretty trailer queen Let's start with the engine which is pretty much perfect if you're asking me. It's a 270 degree crank parallel twin which is absolutely beautiful to my ears. Now not only that you get some decent power too. You're getting 90 horsepower so that's pretty close to the Africa twin and you're getting a tectonic 110 newton meters of torque. So that's more than enough torque to get the job done great off-road characteristics for the motor there so the motor the engine is very strong sounds great as well so it's really going to be able to keep up with your mates on their big adventure bikes and be quite happy out on those big long rides now these upspec triumphs also come with cruise control which i think for these big adventure bike style riding trips cruise control is kind of starting to be mandatory. Now I know you old blokes are going to be saying you don't need cruise control to have a bike. I agree I've never owned a bike with cruise control but I can tell you when I've done my six hour stints on the highway I sure wish I had it. So cruise control is always nice to have on the big adventure bikes in my opinion and the fact that this scrambler has it really lends itself to being able to munch those miles. On the XE the top of the line scrambler it's got all the around Olin's fully adjustable suspension and it makes a fairly respectable 200 millimeters of travel so that's some pretty decent forks you've got there they're 45 millimeter forks so they're beefy they're ready for the job these aren't pretender scrambler suspension setups where they've just put some fork gaiters on the standard road suspension and called it job done this is suspension that's up to the job of actually going off road so this probably of all the scramblers Ramblers I'm going to list has me excited for its potential to be one of the real competitors to something like an Africa Twin or a Super Adventure from KTM. This bike really can do those big miles while still hanging with those big adventure bikes off road. Now, obviously, with a big motor, you're going to have a bit of weight. So, we're looking at 205 kilos dry weight. I really hate that when manufacturers list the dry weight. So, we can guess with the petrol and the fluids that this bike's probably going to be about 220, 225 kilos fully fueled and ready to go. Now that's pretty decent when you compare it to most adventure bikes. It's actually lighter than most of the big flagship adventure bikes. You've actually got to start looking at middleweight adventure bikes to get that kind of weight. So again, advantage to the scrambler there in my opinion. The other really nice thing that this 1200XE has is a 16 litre petrol tank. That's pretty strange on a scrambler. Usually they sacrifice capacity 
for aesthetics. So you get a really nice little tank that looks fantastic, but really as soon as you go down the road, you've bought yourself a coffee, you got to fill up again because you basically get a thimble worth of fuel. So it's nice to see 16 liters here. That's the same as a standard F800 GS. It's also great to see that the Triumph Scrambler has spoke wheels, which in my opinion are mandatory if you're getting off-road in any serious capacity. So thumbs up to Triumph for the spoke wheels. It also adds that great retro look as well. So I think not only does it look fantastic, but it's actually quite practical for riding off-road. So if you're wanting big adventure bike characteristics with great scrambler looks and some pretty good off-road ability, I think the Triumph Scrambler 1200XE is probably your best bet. It's a little on the expensive side, but it is a scrambler. That's how they roll. They're generally more expensive because of the attention to detail they have to pay to with the components. This is also the top of the line. So it's got all the fancy stuff like Olin's traction control, cruise control, riding maps, coffee machine, heated grips, all that kind of crap comes on this bike. So it definitely is a contender for something like a 1250 GS or a 1290 Super Adventure from KTM. So definitely a thought provoking idea. Could this Scrambler be a big adventure bike replacement while still looking great at your local cafe? I'll leave that up to you guys. Comment down below. But Solid, I hear you saying, what if I want to take my scramble into even more difficult terrain? It needs to be lighter, more capable off-road, so I can absolutely thoroughly ruin that beautiful motorcycle that I've just bought. Well, I've got you covered. It's the Fantic Caballero Rally 500. Now this is an Italian motorcycle, so you've got that heritage there if you wanted to argue it for the scramble look, and it looks absolutely fantastic if you're asking me. The aesthetics of this bike, they've really nailed it. I particularly love that green and yellow combination. What exactly is it though? It's a 450cc, so that's a great start. It's a very popular size for an enduro bike. It makes 40 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque. So those are really respectable figures. Being that it's a 450cc single, it's pretty damn light as well. We're looking at 150 kilos. Again, dry weight, so points there have been lost for them taking the easy way out and listing the dry weight. But I suspect with its 12 liter fuel tank and having oil and fluids in it, it's probably gonna tip 160 kilograms, but that's still fairly light. That's going to be the same weight as your KTM 690 Enduro. So that's a fairly decent weight for doing some fairly serious off-road, but that's not all you need. It's got the spoke wheels so it gets another tick there but what about the suspension well you get 200 millimeters of suspension which is fantastic just like the triumph xe so you know you're getting some suspension that can actually handle some proper off-road it's also fully adjustable so again points there so this is really lending itself to being quite capable off-road the other great thing I like about this bike and why I picked it over all the other weird and bespoke scramblers that I could have picked, like the Norton Atlas, is because of its availability. I can actually get one of these here in Australia without too much trouble. So that's a real advantage when you're looking at a bike that isn't really well known. Do you have the dealership sport and the parts availability? Is there someone you can go to to demand help if something fails? You need that accountability in my mind. This bike is definitely the most off-road capable on the list I'm going to give you today. The Fantic 500 Rally is probably the dual sport. Think of it as the DR650, but it actually looks good. Of course, it isn't all sunshine and lollipops with this bike. You have an Italian manufacturer using a Chinese motor. So the motor is actually made by Zongshan, which is actually a pretty reputable Chinese brand, if you can call a Chinese brand that. I wouldn't hold out hopes for this being the most reliable motorcycle you'll own in your garage. So buyer beware there. The other thing is, 
Whilst it does look like it'll be the best off-road, it also means that this will probably be the worst on the road compared to the others. So what if you want to split the middle between the very heavy but very powerful 1200 XE Scrambler and the Fanta Cabarello Rally 500? Well, I think that's where the Ducati Desert Sled slides in. It's listed at 209 kilos wet, so thumbs up there to Caddy for actually listing their wet weight. So 209 kilos, so that'll be roughly about 10, maybe 15 kilos lighter than the Triumph. It is significantly heavier than the Rally 500 from Fantic but it is still lighter than the Triumph. Its power figures are also smack in the middle and makes roughly 73 horsepower and 66 newton meters of torque so that's pretty damn respectable. Now the other things that make this a fantastic bike for riding off-road is again we see that magical 200 millimeters of travel from the suspension. The front forks are fully adjustable USD 46 millimeter forks and the rear a preload and rebound adjustable also with 200 millimeters of clearance so pretty damn capable for off-road so i think this desert sled it definitely looks the part off-road it looks comfortable riding off-road again we see spoke wheels decent clearance it's lighter than the scrambler from triumph so it's going to have an advantage there it's got that classic Ducati L-Twin Desmodromic distribution, two valves per cylinder, and it's air-cooled. That's actually an advantage riding off-road in a lot of scenarios, not particularly if you're riding in hot weather, but it is an advantage in that if you drop it, it's one less thing to break. You don't have to worry about getting radiator guards, etc, etc. So that is quite an advantage and I suspect why it's also a little lighter than the Triumph Scrambler. It's also substantially more affordable than the Triumph Scrambler as well. At least here in Australia, there's a good bit of difference between these bikes. So I suspect that's probably what you'll find everywhere. I think if you're mentally wanting to categorize this in the adventure bike world, the Desert Sled would be a quintessential middleweight adventure bike. So that's where it sits. But this Desert Sled is going to be able to do a bit of everything whilst being quirky with that Ducati heritage and looking good while you're doing it. But solid, what if I open my wallet and there's nothing but a condom from 1982 rotting in there? Well, I've got you covered. There are some cheap options for scramblers out there. You are going to have to sacrifice a little bit of dirt capability, but I think the best option on the list is probably the Benelli Leoncino 500. Now that makes the learner approved motorcycle class here in Australia. It also makes the A2 license class in Europe. So tick there for learner ready. It's also quite cheap given that it's a Benelli. Now that wasn't always the case. I'll talk about that in a minute, but it is a fairly affordable motorcycle. So it ticks both boxes there. So what exactly is it? Well, it's based off the road going Leoncino, which stands for Lion Cub, I believe. And basically they've made it a little more dirt worthy with this trail version. So you get a 500cc parallel twin, makes 48 horsepower and 46 Newton meters of torque. That's fairly respectable for the learner class. Now, what exactly makes it more off-road ready? Well, it's got longer travel, 140 millimeters. It's also got spoke wheels, so thumbs up there. It also has a 19 inch front wheel compared to its road going variant, which I believe has a 17. It is much better at handling those rocks and ruts and the bumps that come from off-road riding. You can see that they have thought a little bit about its off-road capability. It also has a fairly respectable 185 millimeters of clearance and a 12.7 litre fuel tank, which isn't huge, but it also isn't tiny. So it's certainly enough to get down the trails without getting fuel anxiety. Given that this is more of a budget and entry level motorcycle, there are a few compromises, like the fact that most of the components are built out of lead ingots, given that this is 207 kilos at a 500cc motorcycle. So obviously lightweight isn't going to be what this bike is, but it's not too bad. You're still going to be able to pick this up if you're a reasonably fit human being. The other complication here is Benelli is no longer made and owned in Italy. It was bought out by a Chinese firm called QJ. I can't pronounce the whole Chinese name, but they're referred to in the industry as QJ. Now they are very reputable. They make plenty of motorcycles and they also own Volvo. So 
make of that what you will. But there are questions to be had about China. I know how a lot of you feel about buying Chinese products these days, so that's something to consider. But also the quality component. Now I've had a few people come back to me who own these Benelli Leoncinos and say they've been fantastic, very reliable bikes in the comment section when I've talked about them. But there is always that question hanging over your head when you buy a Chinese bike. So think about that as well. You can't have everything when you're buying a cheaper motorcycle. So those are the scramblers that I think are secretly adventure bikes and I think that's a pretty decent list. Of course they're not hardcore off-road bikes, they're not going to be able to do single track but I certainly think if you're looking for something a little different with a little bit of class but you're still wanting to do some dirt, these are the bikes for the job. Now the question is, do you really want to take them off-road? Me personally, I spend as much time in the dirt as I do in my saddle because I suck off-road so I really would be concerned about taking a few of these off-road considering the price tag they're asking and how good they look but hey if you've got the testicular or ovarian fortitude to do that and the deep pockets to fix the bike if you do bugger them up properly well then go for your life because these bikes really without the argument of ruining the pretty aesthetics they're pretty damn capable off-road so that's where I'm gonna leave it hit the like button don't forget to stay shiny side up and I'll catch you in the next video see you later